So I've been using both the Thermal Master P2 Pro and the newer P3. And here's what you need to know if you're deciding between them. So in terms of size and portability, the P2 Pro is absolutely tiny. This thing literally fits on a keychain, weighs nine grams, okay? It's basically about, you know, a third of the size of the P3. And yeah, the P3, it's still small, still pocketable, but it's got a bit more heft and size due to this manual focus lens. So the winner here is definitely the P2 Pro in terms of size and portability. But again, if you're carrying these around in the cases that they come in, you know, they're pretty much the same, same sort of case like this, you're not really going to notice much difference. In terms of resolution and detail, both of these cameras use the same 256 by 192 sensor, and they are both able to be upscaled to 512 to 384 on the app. But the P3 has a slightly lower net D value of less than 35 millikelvin. So this makes it better for identifying subtle changes in temperature. That's going to form a yeah, clearer looking image with greater contrast. So in terms of resolution and detail, I think the P3 wins there. In terms of focus and use cases, the P2 Pro, you know, as you know, it's a fixed focused camera. So there's two focal distances. So you've got this one here for kind of, I guess, medium to longer range. And then you've got this one here for macro tasks up to six centimeters away. And yeah, I mean, it works great for general scanning, fixed range macro work, but the P3 gives you manual focus you know, with this ring here, which means you can dial it in even closer. You know, I've tested this out and it works on, on objects, you know, eight millimeters away versus six centimeters. So you can really get close to things with the P3. So in my opinion, it's, you know, it's way more versatile, especially if you need accuracy and uh, yeah, able to obtain a crisp image from various distances. And this also allows you to surprisingly focus on, on you know, objects up to 80 to 100 plus meters and you can see with, you know, decent clarity. So that's something that you can't get so well with the P2 Pro. So in terms of software and practicality, both of these cameras use that same Tempmaster app. Okay, so you get, yeah, basically different multiple palettes and features measuring temperature features as well. But if you're working with electronics, plumbing, or anything detail sensitive, the P3 gives you way more control and detail as you can really get up close and personal, measure things from various distances, and obtain more accurate readings since the targets will be more in focus. So yeah, I think the P3 has a slight edge here in terms of pro level diagnostics and long range detection using the application. So overall, if you want a tiny thermal camera for fun, home use, close up PCB work or basic scouting, the P2 Pro is an awesome option. But if you're looking at doing some serious diagnostics from various distances, especially up close, you know, the P3 hands down is the better tool. You know, that focusing mechanism is worth every cent for the versatility and optical clarity. But don't take my word for it. Let's have a look at some side-by-side -side comparisons of both of these cameras. All right. So I've got the P2 Pro to the left with the macro lens. And on the right, I've got the P3. So Let's just firstly go as close as I can to this to this little circuit board with the P2 Pro. Okay, and as you can see, I mean it's doing a good job getting really really close and you can see all the components in there easily. Um, but as you can see, when you sort of try to put it up really, really close like that, there's a bit of blurriness. So you're still about maybe three centimeters away from the actual component itself, which is fine. It's going to do the job. But maybe for those smaller components, here's a bit of a distance shot with the P3 to the right and the P2 
Pro to the left. Just really got to focus the P3 to make sure that it's able to get into focus. But if I take off the macro lens here for the P2 Pro, you can see it's decent, but you know, when you move closer, you're not able to refocus it. It also seems like the P3 has slightly slightly longer focal distance so let's get up real close and let's see how we go with these components so i'm putting bringing it around the same you know, same distance as i had the p2 pro and look at that i have to say the detail is definitely a lot more clearer and I can even get like a, about a centimeter from everything. And look at that. It's just, it's really like night and day. Bring this over, have a look at the other components in there. Again, you can get really close. Super, super close. And let's get the P2 Pro. Okay. Still pretty close, but... If you really need to look at tiny components, it might pay off having the extra optical zoom and clarity that you get with the P3. See, look at that. You can read everything on there. Ooh. Serial numbers. Turn this off, and I've got a flashlight here that um, I will turn on and let it kind of warm up a bit first. Um, so this is my Convoy flashlight. Oh, that's pretty hot in there. What I'll do is just lower the brightness of the light so that it has like a kind of look in there. Okay, there we go. So that's, you know, if I try to go further, it's not, it, it gets blurry with the P2 Pro. So you're kind of about three or so centimeters away. from the LED and this is the P3 now let's bring that closer yeah you really get in my opinion like way more detail you can get right up in there So that's the P2 Pro and the P3. So I don't know if you need to be spotting and paying attention to those bond wires on the LEDs or just even certain, certain segments of the die surface. You can even tell that parts of the die surface is hotter than other parts with the P3 whereas it's not as uh, easy to, to see there with the P2 Pro but I'm going to flip this over let's flip them both over to the 100 degrees Celsius to the 600 degrees Celsius mode and uh, I'll just have a look to see how this how it visualizes everything don't want to hold it too close I've got the light on at a pretty high high mode at the moment so
Okay, so I've got the P2 Pro to the left and the P3 to the right. I do notice less graininess on the P3. And I mean, both of them are doing fairly well for this distance. So I can really narrow in the focus with the P3. Okay, so now I'm just looking down the street and it's really apparent that the P3 does have a little bit of extra power in terms of long range, longer range performance. Um, and this focusing knob as well this is great at sort of spotting objects further in the distance. It's also got a slightly lower net D value of 35 so it is a bit more sensitive to temperature differences probably not a huge huge difference but um, yeah I like that you do get a bit of extra zoom on this thing and from what it appears as well just a little bit more optical clarity from objects further away. There's a couple of people walking down below. There. Let's uh, swap the color temperature to this sort of black hot mode. The P2 Pro is still doing really well. It seems to even have a better contrast effect. Interesting. Let's swap over to the white hot. Like those two people in the back, they just uh, uh, more easily identifiable with the P3. Okay, so on the left here, I've got the P2 Pro, and on the right, I've got the P3. So the P2 Pro, again, does not have that focusable mechanism and also has a slightly lower slightly higher net D value compared to the P3 so the P3's got a net D of below 35 millikelvin and it's 40 millikelvin for the P2 Pro so you can see like it's able to just well firstly it's it's able to get a little bit closer the lens just seems to be of a longer focal length, what is a longer focal length basically. So you can see this guy kind of walking across. You can really make out the details of him more on the P3 on the right versus the P2 Pro. There's a bit of noise over here, let's see what's going on. Yeah, there's a couple of people just walking. And you can really make out their body language lot more and even that person in the fur you know further along in the background yeah I 
I really think it's the best of both worlds. I mean, you can't do better than this, even with the, with longer range spotting. It's doing well or better than the P2 Pro, noticeably better. And it is also picking up like a slight difference. Can you see? Just it's it's a. Uh, the difference between the temperature of the ground and the trees it's able to differentiate that better just due to that slightly lower net D value I mean you really want that as low as you can as you can get it and I do apologize if this footage is a little bit shaky because I'm holding both of these cameras in one hand and um, difficult to let's do this so a possum and as we get closer you see it's like it starts to get a bit blurry on the p3 but you can then start to focus it and get a bit more detail this one just keeps running away from me because these the larger ones tend to stay put just when I try to find one there's they all kind of disappear in you Here we go. There's one. So, I mean, even at this distance, you can see the details look much better on the P3 due to the ability to focus and slightly longer focal distance as well. Yeah, if you sort of look all the way in the distance, you'll notice that uh, objects and cars sort of moving in the background are much more easily picked up. Let me see if I can maybe spot some over here. A little bit there. 